let's get the next painting out. This got wet. This is one that where I prepared the stalk and the branch earlier. It's had a chance to dry now so that the wet paper doesn't combine with a wet stroke, another wet stroke here. So here you see I drew this very pale gray first, then I didn't let it dry, so the paper was wet, and then I drew these, these dark strokes on top of it, and when the wet, new wet, hit the old wet, it bled out. It's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but it looks significant on the painting. So this is why I prepared this earlier, let it dry for a little while, and now we can do the second layer. So it'll be, the darker will be crisper on the gray, and it won't bleed so much, hopefully. <laughs> I also took this time while my battery was charging to watch some more videos and really think about what the different leaf clumps they should create a shape overall. And the shape actually takes one of multiple forms. So there's a shape that's kind of like this. So your, your leaves should fit. It should overall give the impression of a shape sort of like this. More, more beautiful, more beautiful than this. And then for vertical ones, it's kind of like, they're like kind of a few different shapes that the whole, I call it the cascade, the, the set of clumps can kind of take these overall dominant forms. And those are considered like pleasing. Like you'll have a good result if you if you use those shapes it'll look nice i'm not at that stage yet i'm just going to make clumps i'm working on making a cascade cascade of clumps let me get more ink i used up a lot of ink on that unexpected unexpected baby bamboo Apparently it's a dog howling a clock outside. As you can see there, I made a series of two-stroke bamboo, two-leaf. Now I can leave it two-leaf, do something else somewhere else, or I can develop it further, add more leaves. It looks really pretty now, so I'm hesitant to add more leaves. I'll do it. I know where they where they should go. So, see, these are the twos. The third one. So, one important thing when you're learning is the center leaf, also sometimes called the host leaf, should go first. Then you go on the left, then the right, then the flyaways, as I call them. But that's the order that is recommended traditionally based on my understanding. Third, third, third. That looks pretty. Like that. 
so double. Sometimes only the top section has very small flyaways um, because they're kind of like meant to be, a, they're like, oh, you don't see them within this clump. I can even go, can go lower. Why not? Why not? Go crazy. Now, where would the stem for this go? It's kind of hard to say. It might be hidden entirely. I'm going to say it's hidden completely. Now we can add more here. And so these, let's see, they might be something like that. So one thing that I've been doing is one of the things about the way bamboo grows is that from every center stalk part, the branches that go out alternate sides. I've been following that, um, but imagine if this is a 3D bamboo, you turn it, you rotate it. Now, this faces you, the viewer. So I haven't really been drawing that, what that would look like, um, because I've just been trying to get it right this way, the way that makes more kind of sense to me, where I can like balance it appropriately and whatnot. But you can consider this to be a sort of attempt at that. faces you. What should I do up here? Something like that. Also facing you. Maybe something up here? Maybe I should leave it alone. <laughs> That's something that's hard for me, is to figure out when it's done. I think I have a tendency to... to make too many marks. I can do some sprays on it. That's always really fun for me. I'm not very... controlled with it. It's something I'm working on. I should watch some videos about how to do sprays. One powerful spray. I think that'll work. It'll look different when it dries. Um, the black will get lighter. Maybe I can look at one of the other blacks that I dried already for comparison. It does get lighter. Alright. This one is done. Very good. Let's see. Yep, I've got one more that I prepared beforehand. Unfortunately, it did get wet. I'm going to avoid drying in this area because of the water situation. Oh, God, the water situation continues. Water problems. Water enemy of paper. Scissors as well, as we all know. All right. Here we go. From the sprays that we did 
on the most recent one in order it wasn't spraying just with the ink properly because I'm not I don't know how to do it like that so I took one dip into the dirty water and then it was quite full of water and I could do just like a little spray to get these big old dots and so now my brush is filled with dark ink and it's quite wet let's get our ink stone here see if anything comes off of it a little bit but we'll try it with a wet quite wet series of, of two. Then the flyaway up here. Try and make it a three. quite geometric, but it seems to do the job. Do I want another fly up here? That looks too crazy. I'm going to leave it alone. So we have our, these are kind of spraying down this way, the cascade goes this way. So I can do a similar style up here. I can try to replicate the cascade. Let's try and do that. Cascade wet here. Does that look nice? Let's just go for it. So we're gonna do the mirror image of what we just did. Okay, so we just went pew pew. Now we're going pew pew. This is like the little the little buddy. I hope you like those sound effects. You know, I prefer a much more loose style, but, you know, you could have much better control with where you do your joints and when you put them in. I kind of more, more freestyle them to give a general impression of joints rather than drawing something like really precise. going to be like our third visual section, right? So the idea is the eye goes first to this main section, then up here, then maybe up here. Could have something... Let's think about the, the leaf wheel. Let me draw for you the leaf wheel. Leaves go... The leaf wheel... Can you draw your leaves going in any direction? The leaf wheel. I saw this in a book. And it's kind of like, I, I had to think about it. Like, what does it truly mean to be able to draw a leaf wheel? 
it means that you can picture what if the leaf went straight down? What if it went that way? What if it went that way? Right? And you can kind of go through all the options in your head, picture what each one would look like, and then compare with what you have already and think about how it would look in relation. I mean, it's possible we don't need to add anything there. I would kind of like to add something here, but maybe I should just leave it alone. Should I add another clump here? Maybe you can take a look too, so you don't have to look at it sideways. And I'll look at it sideways. I think it's helpful to do that. I think it's good to look at your art from different perspectives. You get to kind of things that might have seemed visually balanced in one dimension, say this dimension, don't look visually balanced in this dimension. And once you spot that, you can kind of go back and make it visually balanced in this direction. I like to have balance in all axes. Maybe don't add anything. Maybe add a big leaf. Big leaf back there. Big leaf. There. Perfect. Done. Whew. Done. Gonna stop the video momentarily. You can see the two that I made in this session. I hope you enjoyed, and that's it.